welcome to a new edition of EAU TV at the 37th annual meeting of the European Association of Urology. In this show, we are going to discuss the topic of stones. And I am Thomas Knoll. I'm Associate Professor of Mannheim University Hospital and Chair of the Urology Department in Sindelfingen, Germany. I'm very much involved in EAU guidelines. Um, I'm a member of the board. I'm responsible for the Associates program. And it's my great pleasure that I'm joined by Dr. Amelia Pietropaolo, who is based in Southampton in UK. She's an Associate Specialist at the University Hospital of Southampton. And her main field of interest is, of course, urolithiasis and endourology, minimal invasive surgery and new technology. Welcome, Amelia. Thank you very much, Thomas. It's Amelia. a pleasure. It's my pleasure. Amelia, we just shared together the plenary on stones, and um, I think it was a very nice session touching a lot of topics in stones and stone treatment. But I personally believe um, what is most exciting or what became most exciting in the last 10 years is laser lithotripsy. I mean, when I started urology, end of the 90s, um, the holmium laser was just there, and for two decades, maybe almost three, we thought um, that's the end of um, evolution, maybe, um, the gold standard for everything. And it's quite exciting that on one hand, we see that there's a development of Holmium laser technology itself, pulse modulation, high power lasers. But um, there's a new kit on the block, the thorium fiber laser, uh, which started with a great enthusiasm. And um, so in your opinion, since you have experience with um, these lasers, which is best for lithotripsy, to keep it simple? Is it the holmium or is it the thorium fiber laser? Thank you very much, Thomas, for the introduction, first of all, but also for this question. Uh, as you said, this uh, thorium fiber laser is the last uh, innovation in terms of technology. And clearly, the fact that it's new means that we don't know yet everything about it. But it's been used very much, and there are some papers and publication about it. But clearly the fact that we are still asking ourselves what's the best laser means that we don't know yet, 100%. And that's why probably we need to discuss a little bit more to understand what's the best. Clearly each of them, Holmium, Young Laser and Tulium Fiber Laser, have specific characteristics that we are going to analyze and have, they, are, they are excellent products and technology. So if we try to state general, which characteristics would you expect from a laser that you use for stone intervention? So for stone intervention, it is very important that our laser is effective and uh, the speed of the dusting is also very important. That's why both lasers that we've mentioned, the Tolmium Yag laser and Tulium Fiber laser are very good mm -hmm. for this, for, because they can achieve a very effective dusting. And in particular, Holmium laser is now very good for this, thank you, the high power technology that can achieve um, quicker stone dusting and the slower, uh, shorter operating time. In terms of tulium fiber laser, because it is fiber is smaller, the irrigation is better, is also increased and reduce the operating time, increasing the speed of the operation. But in particular, it looks like the dust is much finer. And that's probably the high difference between the two. However, we also need to consider the temperature. And that's what we probably don't know yet about the difference of the two lasers, what is reality is, uh, happens inside the kidney when we activate our laser and the difference between the two. I would like to pick two uh, terms you just mentioned. First, you said dusting. Um, I mean, there are different descriptions of disintegration techniques like dusting, pop dusting or popcorning uh, fragmentation. Is dusting what you usually try to achieve or do you have cases where you try to fragment, so break the stone into pieces that can be extracted? What is your usual strategy for a standard case? Absolutely, that's a very good question. It very much depends on the type of the stone. So every time we start a procedure, I normally start with very basic standard settings to test the stone and see how it reacts with low power and low rate. Mm. Taste but the then stone. Taste the stone, yeah. exactly. Mm. And then according to if it's a hard stone or if it's much softer stone, then I can decide. So if it's a hard stone, uh, sometimes we need to fragment and remove the fragments. And for these, we don't need a very high rate. So we can also use a low power 
laser for mm. that. So we can fragment the stone, remove all the fragments and make sure the patient will be stone free equally. For this, probably we will need an access sheath in order to be able to go mm. in and out and remove the fragment effectively. In terms of dust, clearly if the stone is uh, soft enough or if we have very high rate, we will be able to dust. And in my opinion, I think it's better when we have a big stone mm. and not too hard to dust it in order to have a shorter operating time and make sure the dust can flow spontaneously through the urinary tract. So you are talking about um, retrograde intravenous surgery, flexible ureteroscopy. Yes. Um, do you have the same strategy if you would do, if you would do a PCNL? Well, for PCNL, it's a bit different because uh, clearly we have much better irrigation and mainly for mini PCNL, we have a vacuum uh, cleaner effect or some suctions device. So uh, removing the, also the fragments is easier because while in flexible ureteroscopy, we need to physically remove one by one with mm. the basket and it takes more time. With the PCNL, because we have a bigger sheath and a better irrigation with the vacuum cleaner effect, then we can easily remove the fragments thanks to these uh, advantages. Mm. So in this case, we can also dust, but actually fragmenting is small fragments can allow equally a very good stone free rate with a shorter operating mm. time and we don't need very high rate okay. in this case. Okay. A discussion that came at least well new into my mind with the sodium fiber laser was the peak power issue. So um, the Holmium Yak laser has a high peak power of um, like 5000 Watt um, compared to a sodium fiber laser depending on a manufacturer who is around 500 Watts only. And um, the theory behind was always that a higher peak power is more well effective um, when you treat very hard stones. Um, when you do dusting with a sodium fiber laser in a hard stone, as you just mentioned. Um, do you ever realize an issue that it's not effective enough and that you have to change back to a Holmium laser? Yes, Thomas, you're right. I don't have a huge variety of experience with the tulium fiber laser. However, I've seen that uh, with very high uh, power settings, and, may, and mainly with the very high rates, mm. you can have a, a effect of a carbonization of the zone. And that's very visible. And once this happens, the fragmentation or the dusting doesn't happen anymore. So you need immediately to change the setting. And I wonder if this can have a big af effect also on the temperature mm. inside the kidney. I had the same what experience. I had yeah. the same experience. I had some cases where I really changed during the operation from the thulium fiber mm -hmm. to the holmium yak laser. Okay. But um, I'm still not sure if it was just because we have no real experience on the right settings. And um, as you know, and we are coming to the safety issue afterwards, um, when the first thulium fiber laser came on the market, um, some people did not consider safety and they used very high power settings in the ureter. Uh, with severe complications to the patients. And um, the problem now for us is, since we don't know, the manufacturers don't know either. And um, the standard settings of these thulium fiber lays are so low that you cannot break anything. Um, exactly. So you have to increase. And I think we have to play around, taste the stone, yes. But I'm sure that we need more experience. You mentioned temperature. Temperature is an issue when you do laser lithotripsy. And again, based on the bench series that we have for all lasers, we know that the water absorption of the thulium fiber laser is four times higher yeah. than for the holmium yak laser. And my first impression was that adds safety. But if you go into the literature, there are papers showing that maybe um, the temperature increase is higher with the thulium fiber laser than with the holmium yak laser, probably because of the higher absorption in water. Do we have any experience or advice on that? There are many studies, but so far, unfortunately, they're only done on portion models mm. or in laboratories. So it looks like, and there are also some MRI studies checking what happens in the kidney while the laser is actually working. Mm. And uh, you can see that there is an immediate heat impact on some parts of the kidneys. What we don't know, it was going to happen long term. Mm. So I think what we need to do is really concentrate on doing studies 
in our settings because we are actually on the field and we will need to do some prospective studies with our patients to understand what's the safety profile of the tulium fiber laser, absolutely. I think it depends very much on how you use your laser. So I yeah. think there was an abstract here at this meeting showing that with either laser after 15 to 20 seconds you reach um, the temperature threshold of uh, 43 degrees Celsius, uh, which is well potentially dangerous uh, for the kidney. On the other hand, usually I don't put my foot um, for 20 seconds exactly. on the pedals, but we do it more like with interruptions. Yes. And this changes the whole um, um, a whole concept um, if you place an exercise, if exactly. you have continuous irrigation. That's what I, want. I think there are so many factors, uh, it's, it's hard to say. I personally, I'm, I'm not convinced, but I'm a little alone with that, um, that the temperature issue is of that importance for the kidney. Because I really believe um, if you have an exercise, if, if the patient was presented, if you don't do well 10 minutes continuous, continuous firing. Um, I, I, I had never had a case uh, where, um, maybe I was lucky, I had never had a case um, of a temperature injury of the kidney. And I don't know no one, maybe no one tells. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think for the ureter it's certainly different. It does, it is different, yes. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, yeah, as you said, no one tells or we don't know exactly when and how to recognize this type of complication. But definitely in the ureter we know yeah. that this can cause strictures or very bad long-term complications. So taking care, I think, is a good advice. Absolutely, <laughs> yes. So, um, so finally, Amelia, um, if you have a meeting with your hospital administration and they say, okay, we will buy you one laser, but just one, um, what would you choose? Yeah, that's a very difficult decision, actually. And many things need to be considered, of course, also the economic factor. Um, however, considering everything we've said so far, and considering that the Tulium fiber laser is still under study for many things, mainly for the, we don't know what are the best settings in stones, what are the best settings in prostate. I think if we want to consider a laser to use in a whole department, mm. probably I would choose a high power holmium laser that can be used for both prostate nucleation and stones and have still very good results because we see that with the pulse modulation and the high power settings, we can treat heavy tribal stones with good outcomes. Yeah, it's a 100% agree. I mean, yeah. um, there are new players um, coming, pulse thulium yak lasers. Absolutely. And <laughs> maybe we do the same next year next in Milan year. <laughs> and we then know, we know more. more. Exactly. <laughs> uh, well, thank you very much, Amelia. I think um, the future will show uh, into which direction we go. And maybe we stay with a collection of lasers instead of the one and only. Exactly. Um, at least endurology remains to be fun. If and we can, <laughs> that would be perfect. It would yeah. be ideal. But still, we don't know where the truth is. It's probably in the middle. Somewhere. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Thomas, for everything.